Kate, I'm so sorry to tell you that I'm leaving Trinity to go do mission work in Afghanistan. God's calling me to teach young girls over there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shelly, surely not. Surely you're mishearing how God's speaking to you. I really don't think you're discerning correctly. You dare to challenge me? <laughs> yes, I dare. I mean, maybe this is what Peter felt when Jesus described his upcoming crucifixion. Like Peter, I was called to Trinity to work alongside you and to be mentored by you and the congregation. I wasn't called to do all this ministry alone. Think of how much we can accomplish together. Mm. Our names will be known throughout the presbytery. <laughs> and maybe, maybe even the synod. Ah. I mean, how, how will we manage without you here? Hmm. Although... <laughs> on, on the other hand, perhaps we can manage just fine without you. Perhaps all of my ideas about how a church could be run more effectively could be put into place. Ooh, the temptation of it all. Well, maybe such an extreme self-sacrifice isn't exactly what Jesus is asking of me. Maybe it'd be safer if I just stay put. Maybe the sacrifice in following Jesus means staying right here and following Jesus with the ministries given to us in this time and this place. Yeah, it's not easy for either of us to be pastors. It can be very challenging at times. But think how challenging it is to be a member at Trinity. Jesus challenges this church in some major ways. Jesus expects a lot of us as disciples, as Christ followers. Yeah, there's lots of stumbling blocks that we have to step over or around or kick out of the way. You know, I stay so very busy here. My schedule is nonstop, 24-7. But sometimes Forrest challenges me with questions about whether I do things out of habit or because I want everyone to be impressed or because staying busy means that I don't have to do housework or pay the bills. <laughs> Sometimes I think my busy schedule of going and doing enables me to avoid quiet time with Jesus. Yeah, I know what you mean. As a new pastor and a newlywed and immigrating a husband, <laughs> I worry that I have to take all the responsibility for our financial security. I worry that we have to build up our savings rather than pledge generously to the church. I find it hard to trust that we'll have enough money for plane tickets to England or a new car or for future children and their college. Jesus challenges me to have faith enough to tithe, but it's tough when I like things like red cowboy boots. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> you know, Kate, now that we're called teaching elders, perhaps this is what we should teach the congregation. But I suspect that they're going to hear Jesus more clearly if we teach by showing, by being role models for them. Kind of like what we expect from our Sunday school teachers that we're going to commission today. By commissioning, I mean send them forth into our classrooms to demonstrate with their lives, by giving of their time and themselves and their love, more than just biblical knowledge, but what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Yeah, I'm really excited to teach confirmation this year. 
But sometimes those confirmands can ask some pretty tough questions, mm -hmm. and I have to be vulnerable and humble in answering them as honestly as I can. Mm -hmm. All these stumbling blocks, yours, mine, ours, seem like mountains too large to overcome on our own. When we focus on them, determined to kick them out of our way, you know, out of sight, out of mind. That's never worked very well for me. They keep coming back to trip me up. They're barriers between me and God. I wonder if I need to focus on what's possible with God rather than what's possible on my own. Perhaps what Jesus means by denying ourselves and taking up our crosses and following Jesus is that it means putting God first and remembering that Jesus has already gone to the cross, already asked for forgiveness for us, to be the way for us. So you're saying that we don't have to martyr ourselves on some heavy cross because Jesus has already done what we can't do for ourselves? That denying ourselves means that we don't have to do the crucifixion all over again? And that taking up the cross that he already died on means taking up the way that Jesus lived here on earth. That Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the perfect sacrifice. So it doesn't have to be repeated over and over again by us. Hmm. Yes. If we focus on the resurrection, we can focus on divine possibilities, mm -hmm. on God possibilities, so much more than what we can do on our own. Remember, Jesus did everything by loving others. If we can free ourselves from being so self-concerned with what we have, mm -hmm. what we don't have, what we can't do, Maybe then we can free up energies for serving others. Hmm. At the same time, when Jesus commands us to deny ourselves, Jesus isn't asking us to step outside our families, our jobs, our friends, the culture that we live in. Rather, I hear that taking up the cross and denying ourselves is to deny ourselves the extreme comforts, the extreme security, the extreme independence that protects us from others and all the risks of life. Taking up the cross and denying ourselves means denying the power of these stumbling blocks in our lives. Realigning ourselves with God who's already won the final victory. Trusting in Jesus' vision of the kingdom existing right here, right now in bits and pieces. And we can't really see this kingdom unless we reorient ourselves into partnering with Jesus. Mm -hmm. This Jesus who, like Simon says, calls us to try hard things. Like Simon Peter, <laughs> we may want a Jesus who doesn't have to die, who can magically make the world a better mm. place. Yeah. If we claim to be Christ followers, we must face the realities of poverty, homelessness, hunger, injustice for the mentally ill and immigrants right here in our own community. I think of Pete Peterson who loves his son so much that he dared to speak up over and over again against the powers who tried to close K&I. 
I think of our members who work faithfully at doorstep, rescue mission, let's help, and meals on wheels. And those who pledge generously so that the church can support ministries to the poor and the vulnerable right here and far away. Oh, I was so impressed with our six youth who gave up nine days to travel to El Salvador mm -hmm. to see close up how difficult it is to live where schooling and jobs and medical care are just inadequate. It was hard for them to look into Nadi's two-year-old face and witness such drastic malnutrition. Yeah. When we're overwhelmed with just how systemic hunger and homelessness are, almost impossible to imagine eradicating them, our choice is to give up give in to these stumbling blocks around us or deny their power over us to live counterculturally, not outside the culture in which we find ourselves but thoroughly engaged in resisting powers which deny life to the vulnerable, to the oppressed, those who have no voice, those who are marginalized by being different, I believe that's where we'll find Jesus working. The way of the cross is to claim life and truth within the power of God's love mm -hmm. rather than the despair that's so visible and widespread. This is exactly why I choose to be a Christ follower. It's the way of hope. A hope that's not dependent on how good or how strong I am. But a hope in God's love for all people. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. Amen.